Previously in this chapter, we have been solving for simple probability, one event at a time kind of thing. Now we're cranking it up a notch and we're gonna be taking a look at compound probability of independent events. This is level 11, stage six, seventh grade math. Our level 11 overview for probability we are now on stage six, which means that we are almost done with this level. Taking a look at the state standard, it says that we're gonna understand that just as with simple events, the probability of compound events is the fraction of outcomes in the sample space for which the compound event occurs. Let's take a look at the stage six overview, shall we? For the villains, what is a compound event? What is an independent event? And what is a dependent event? And for the cheat codes, how do you find the probability of independent events? All right, let's take a look at the vocabulary. A compound event consists of two or more simple events. An independent event is when the outcome from the first event does not affect the results of the second event. And a dependent event is when the outcome from the first event does affect the results of the second event. Here we go, example number one. Determine if a situation is independent or dependent. Well, Sam picks a card, he looks at it, and he puts it back in the pile. Then Ella picks a card. And the conclusion is that this is an independent event because Sam puts his card back into the pile. All of the cards were still available to Ella. Okay, this is example number two. Determine if a situation is independent or dependent. Clemente picks out a crayon to use, then Matilde picks out a crayon from what is left. Well, the conclusion is that this is dependent because Matilde could only pick from what was left over. Dependent probability. People ask me all the time, how do you find the compound probability of independent events? And I say, well, it's kind of easy. Step number one, you wanna write the probability of the first event as a fraction. Step number two, write the probability of the second event as a fraction. Step number three, multiply their two probabilities together. And then step number four, write the fraction in simplest form. It's that easy. Example number three, find the probability of picking a vowel and also rolling an even number on a number cube. Well, picking a vowel from the alphabet is like five out of 26. There's five vowels, A, E, I, O, U. And there's a total of 26 vowels. So 26 is the bottom of the fraction. The probability of rolling an even number on a number cube is one out of two. Now, technically it's three out of six because there's three positive outcomes, two, four, and six. And the bottom number is six because there's six sides but three over six can be reduced down to one half. We're gonna multiply those two fractions together. Five over 26 times one over two gives us our answer of five over 52. Example number four, find the probability of flipping three coins and getting them to all land heads up. Well, the probability of flipping heads on the first coin is one over two. That's because each coin has two sides with one side being heads. Well, the same is true for the second coin. It's also one over two. And the same is true for the third coin. It's also gonna be one over two. And like I told you before, you wanna multiply your probabilities together. We multiply one half times one half times one half, and we end up with a correct answer of one over eight, and that's money. Example number five, our final example. 
Show the sample space for the probability of flipping three coins and getting them to all land heads up. A coin has two sides, heads and tails. We want to know if you flip three coins, what's the probability of them all having heads being faced up? Well, one possibility would be a positive outcome of heads, heads, and heads. Heads, heads, and tails would be another one. Heads, tails, heads. Heads, tails, and tails. Another possibility would be having tails on the first coin, heads and heads on the second and third. Tails, heads, tails. Tails, tails, heads. And then the worst one is this one, tails, tails, tails. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, well, there's only one positive outcome where you get all three to be heads face up. And then there is a total of eight different outcomes. So our probability here would be one out of eight. Bzzz. Be careful. A common mistake students make when solving for the compound probability of independent events is they add their fractions together. Don't do that. Be sure to remember that you need to multiply to find the final answer. And we've got our motivational quotes of the day. This one comes from Nelson Mandela. He, he says, it always seems impossible until it's done. And I don't know about you, but sometimes you're working on something. You're like, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. And the next thing you know, you've done it. You're done. And so he's right. Sometimes things can be, it seem impossible until they actually are accomplished. And then Benjamin Franklin said this. He says, in this world, nothing can be said to be certain except for death and taxes. Um, yeah, it's uh, it definitely can be overwhelming, those two. Um, but yeah, pretty much everything else is uh, up for grabs and it's really up to you to, uh, to make it happen. See ya.